morning. <laughs> How are you doing? A pleasure. a pleasure to be here. I'm doing great. I, what about you? Good. I'm good. I'm excited. This is um, our first book club conversations. I'm really, really happy. Really, really excited. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my notes because I did writing and all of that. So, of course, we're reading and for the viewing audience that's going to probably be joining on somewhere along in the process, we're reading prayers that activate blessings. Experience the protection, power, and favor of God for you and your loved ones by John Eckhart, best-selling authors. So, Pam, have you started reading? I have started reading. I have started reading. And listen, mm -hmm. even when, even before I started reading, I remember when you called me about the book. And remember, we would have gone through that conversation with regards to the introduction only. <laughs> listen, done. That is the start of the book. Yes. That is not an introduction. That is the start <laughs> of the book. Yeah. A mess. A mess. A mess. Listen, this is the kind of book that hits you for six, in my opinion, the intro. So, okay. So before we jump in, let's do our reading tips. Um, so we're doing this book. We know we're, we're reading for meaning. Let me put it like that. Reading for meaning. It's not like your regular novel and you just read through and you get excited and it's all cute. Reading for meaning. So what is your approach? Do you have an approach to reading? Like if you're reading to pull meaning out of a book or whatever? For me, I, first of all, I need to put aside that time to read okay. because, you know, there are so many things that I'm doing. There are so many projects and with work and everything else you need to put aside so I have sort of put aside a time it may not always work out meaning that I may not always get that particular time right. but putting that side uh, you know that aside in order so that I can pick up this book whether it's on my my digital or, or laptop or whatever I need to have a little time by myself in order to read and actually get what this book is about and what it means. Right. So what you're basically saying is that it's not that it has to be the same day and time each week, but the point is that you set aside um, time intentionally for the purpose of doing the reading. So you could focus, basically. That's what you're saying. Definitely. Gotcha. Definitely. Uh, so for me, my quick reading tip for today is... Um, highlighting what stands out um especially if you're reading for meaning we could forget and it doesn't mean you are forgetful it just means you're not going to remember everything so these are my best friends this is my friend yellow i don't know if you can see it on the screen and this is my friend orange and this is my friend green oh you're not seeing my green friend at all no. <laughs> but it's in my hand and um and this is my friend Bluing Pen, and I have my friend Redding Pen somewhere about. And what I do is I highlight, and the whole point is I'm highlighting. And the reason why I have three different colors is because it sort of breaks things up in the brain. Because if you hi highlight everything in one color, it looks like all one big blob. But when you highlight different things using different colors, then it makes things stand out in the eye and to the brain, literally to the brain um, when you're reading. So for example, when I started, I started out with my green friend. And what I started doing is any script here that I read that stands out, I'd highlight in green. And then I started highlighting in orange. And orange is like, <gasps> you know, when you have those moments when you're reading, <gasps> oh my God, right. The oh my gosh moments, that's my yellow highlight. And then my, I mean, that's my orange highlight. And then my yellow highlight is like that thing that I want to repeat to myself. So any like a one liner that I want to repeat to myself, that goes in yellow. So that way it's like in my mind, every time I see green, I know green is a scripture that I want to remember. Every time I see orange, orange is that, two lines that just blow my mind and then anytime I see yellow 
Yellow is that thing that I read that I want to repeat to myself because I want to remember it. And then sometimes you might see other details. So like in a corner, I'll be writing like a little note or something like that. So I have my pen or my pencil for that. So that's like my quick reading tip. If it is your reading for meaning and you want to remember what you read, you want, you want it to stand out to you, especially if you're working from a physical. Now, even if you're working from a digital copy, you could do the same thing. A lot of PDFs now and a lot of digital books come with the option to highlight. So even if you're working online from an Adobe document, for example, and you're working with a PDF, if it's like on your computer, usually it gives you the, op the option to highlight and you could pick your highlight color and you could highlight and save the changes that you made to the document after. So you could have a very similar experience even if you're reading digitally. Okay, well, I, that is a tip that I'm gonna take because that is not a tip that I followed. I would, for me, in reading, and the thing is, you know, I would highlight, I would usually use yellow, which is mm -hmm. the color that I would highlight. And listen, this book is, Alina, this book is something else. Every, listen, she is saying, you know, she's saying that the things that, you know, that stand out to you, the things that you want to repeat and all of these things into your life. Listen, everything, everything stands about, out. You want, to repeat, you want to remember, it stands out. That is just how amazing. And that is movie. why, Pam, I color code. Because things stand out for different reasons. And I find for me, if I just use one color, there's like the whole book just highlighted. But if I use different colors, it'll be okay. If I want to look for the scriptures, then look for that color. Because different things, to me at least, they're everybody different. But to me, different things stand out for different reasons. So that's why I use different colors. Like with the, and even if you don't have a highlighter, like even like if I don't have highlighters, then I'll probably use like different color pens. So I might highlight in red, ink, blue, ink, black, ink, pencil. Or if I only have one color, then I might do um, a straight line versus a squiggly line versus circling something. The point is create... Yeah differentiation in like how you do it how you highlight so that way it could different reasons why things are standing out to you it could pop at you when you see it so you're not everything to look like one big blob you know right so Which we jump yeah, yeah 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 it does it does it does so good so we're jumping into book club conversation so hmm what are we talking about now pop <laughs> <laughs> what stood out to you? <laughs> well, for me, um, and I'm looking down as well because I have some stuff written down. I've yeah. got my laptop in front of me also. So I've got many things that are um, that would have stood out to me. Now, I mentioned the introduction first off. Mm -hmm. The introduction ain't no introduction. It's part of the book. <laughs> it's part of the book. Because these are declarations from the get-go these declarations stood out they were made yeah. and stood out to me from the beginning so of course you know you read you read you get to the actual name of the book yes yeah prayers for blessings and all of these things and then when you open it you get into this entire listing of these declarations that can be made into your life and when you begin to go through those declarations Alina, listen, it, it touches every part of your life. It's not just, yeah. it's not just, listen, not, let me tell you, it's not just your family life or, or, you know, as a businesswoman or as a teacher or as a mother, it touches every single part. No matter so, who you are, I, this I, book is for you. Right. That's right. That's yeah. right. It touches every area of your life, no matter where you come from, no matter what your background is. That is one thing I know definitely. It doesn't matter who you are, as Alina said, it doesn't matter where you have come from, but the introduction alone, when you yeah. get there, you would not want to put this down. You're not gonna wanna, you're not gonna wanna let it, listen, they're gonna have to call you out from your bedroom or from your secret place or yes. from your washroom because what you're doing is <laughs> real. And real. <laughs> yes. So Alina. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, um, a couple of things I highlighted, that I want to um, make mention of in case it stood out to you too. Because um, as I tell you, I'm highlighting, right? 
So one of the first yes. things when we jumped into the, I guess it's the introduction. The, ooh, did my page just get mixed up? Yes, Gil. As we jump into the introduction, the introduction talks about, it's highlighted as a better understanding of blessing and prosperity. And the first thing that stood out to me is that when we talk, a lot of times we use the words blessings and prosperity interchangeably. And I was, it, for the first time I paid attention to that, like we use the words blessing and prosperity interchangeably. So I was like, why not just say a better understanding of blessing or a better understanding of prosperity, but it said blessing and prosperity. So it made me wonder to myself, what's the difference between the two? Clearly it's not the same thing if, if you have to use both words. So like, okay, I'm an educator in my core. So then, you know, my educator mode kick in. And so I was thinking, okay, let me get into it. And so when I started reading, not in the book, I, I did other readings, I looked it up, and when you look at the core definition of blessing, blessing is defined as favor or gift bestowed by God bringing happiness. So I was like, all right, cool, I get that. Because I never thought, I don't know. You know what? Sometimes you could be in a thing, quote unquote, in a thing so long that yeah. you use the language without thinking literally what it means. And I think the blessing and prosperity thing for me is an example that I never really... I never did an in-depth study on it before. And I never really thought about it like that before. So now I'm reading, I'm like, okay, blessing really is defined as a favor or gift bestowed by God bringing happiness. And I'm like, all right, cool. But so in my mind, I'm thinking, mm, is that the same as prosperity? I don't know. Let's look. So, you know, I went into the definition for prosperity and prosperity talks about, it says by definition, um, I shouldn't say by definition. I actually would have researched um, like the biblical meaning to a word. That's actually what I researched. It wasn't just like I went to a dictionary. I think I, I had looked up the biblical meaning for the word. And it was saying that yeah. prosperity is not about attaining wealth. Prosperity is about thriving as a person God created you to be. And that knocked me out. That took me for a good 15 minutes right there. When I started thinking, I was like prosperity is not about attaining wealth. It's about thriving as a person God created you to be. Girl, knock me out. Yes. I, I just need to yes. sit down right here. Yes. I was me staring at the wall, just soaking that in. I, I speak the truth to you. Soaking at it, just staring at the wall like... And I just kept repeating that, like, because now what, what was happening is that my mindset was being broken down. And I think the mindset for a lot, because I think for most people, when we think about blessing and prosperity, we automatically equate it and make it equal to having our needs met. We might necessarily think specifically in terms of like money, but we definitely tend to think about having our needs met. And here it is, I'm reading definitions for blessings and prosperity, and none of them has anything to do with needs being met. Yes. I was like, what? That, yeah, yes. And this is me taking up. Pause, because even as I think about it again, it hit me for the next fifteen. Like blessing and prosperity yeah. at its core, it's not about my needs being met. But it's so interesting, Pam, because a lot of times when we pray and we say, "Lord, that you would bless me," and you would this Lord and you would that Lord, in the back of our minds, I mean, of course, it might not apply to everybody, but it it used to apply to me, and it applied to a lot of people that I could recall conversations with. In the back of our minds, we're thinking about our needs and our wants, God, that you would bless me because, and we're thinking that with the, and I'm not saying with blessings that wouldn't come, but it was so significant to me that the core of what a blessing is about and at the core of what prosperity is about based on the definition that I found, that that is not what it's at core. It's like almost though it making me think, having your needs met is like a side effect it's like a side thing that yes. comes along with it but it's not the main thing sorry go ahead go ahead that's right. 
No, 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 I was just about to say, and you're so right, you know, because we are speaking from um, a biblical perspective here with regards to the book and discussing yeah. what it says about blessing prosperity. And, you know, you would hear people, even as you were saying, you know, you come on thinking, okay, prosperity, having your needs met, having wealth, you know, having probably a house, having a car, having a really good job and all of these things. But rarely, as you mentioned there, it is a side effect because, and then you hear people also saying, you know, you have people bringing the prosperity message and all of that. But really and truly, this prosperity message is not is not nothing to do with money. Nope. You know, it's nothing to do with money. It's really walking in that place or being who God has created us to be. And you know, yeah. as you said, that really has it really is something that has opened up our minds. Yeah. You know, getting us to go deeper rather than just taking it at the surface level and not, you know, something you just hear it and that's it. You go over it and then you, you move on to something yeah. else. But it is something that has made you stop and really mm. think. Mm. I, never, I never knew. Never and thought listen, about it and, like that. Didn't realize. That, that's right. And the thing is, we will, there are things that we tell ourselves that we know but when we get revelation, it's like, my God, I knew nothing. Yeah. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know this. Yeah. 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 That, that's to me. And I think, I think now that I'm reading my notes on it again, it's, it's like, it, you see, I rock back again because it's like, yeah. because when you look at prosperity, it says that prosperity is about thriving as the person God created you to be, listen. And I was yes. like, listen, I didn't even think the fullness that hit me as yet, but it really made me pull back and be like, you know, to start to ask myself questions. Am I, am I prospering? To what extent am I prospering? Um, wh what kind of alignment do I need to, to live in the fullness of prosperity? Because no fullness of prosperity have nothing to do with money, have nothing to do with whether have food to eat or whether you know i have the things that i want to buy or i could do go on the, the line that i want to go on prosperity at its core is about me not just being you know not just being thriving listen thriving is a word in a thriving yeah. like being your optimal level thriving yes as the person that God created me to be. And it made me, I mean, it really made me pull back and be like, oh, not just am I operating in God's will. And, you know, sometimes we have those conversations, whether with our internally or with others, about functioning in the will of God and what God calling and beyond that. Right. Thriving yeah. your optimal self as the person God created That's you to be. Because then what the the assumption then that would be associated with that, at least in my head, is when I thrive as who God created me to be, that's how this, what I'm calling now the side effects. That's how the side effects would automatically kick in because then I wouldn't have to worry about my needs because if I am being who God created me to be, the provision for everything that I need supposed to follow, uh, whether it's money, things, um, vehicle, whatever, those things and all these things would be added you know, so that was just, that's, I don't want to stick on that, but I was, that stood out to me. God, Pamela, I started to read nothing. That was just, the, that was just the, that was just the headline to the page. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the headline you know, to the page that provoked right. all of that jazz. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you know, and the thing is, you know, we came on, book club conversation is about having a conversation about a yeah. book that we're reading, you know, mm -hmm. we're reading together. And, yeah. you know, and what you, you talked about blessing and prosperity there, you know, what was even mentioned and we, st listen, we haven't gotten into the meat of the matter. Eh? No. About the Don't mind me. I'm um, just getting my pillow. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, so one of the other things, one thing that would have stood out to me as well, and it, it was, it was more so a reminder, mm -hmm. you know, it was just a reminder that we we are actually the ones that can choose to get the blessing or the prosperity to have to live in a place in of, we yeah. are mm -hmm. yes you know we are the ones that can choose 
the blessing you know yes. so if we don't think that obviously it's going to be something else you know but it was just a reminder for us because because it, it comes as a result of our this of of it comes as a result of our decision making a decision uh, uh, it come, which I think the choice kicks in as you're saying that the choice and kicks in as a result of the way we choose to live our life because in That's order right. to thrive as who God created us to be we have to choose to follow that path yes and then what That's comes that, with that is the blessing what comes with that is the prosperity is the is the evolution of self to being the best you that God created you to be and then the, the result of that is that all the other things are now added. I get that's it. That's right. That's right. And it's important in choosing as well, in saying or speaking it. Yeah. When we speak things, they come to life. Yep. And I know, Alina, you would have experienced that in your own life. And I have experienced it. And listen, many of you who are listening and are tuning in and are looking on, you have to speak the yeah. blessings into your life you know whether it's your relationships whether it's your families wherever it is you have to seek the blessings and this book this is a fantastic book you need to get it yeah you need to get it yeah yeah your life will never be mm -hmm. and okay so we need to actually get into at least your first paragraph right <laughs> <laughs> so um my highlight in the first paragraph one of the first things i highlighted is that if you put in the right amount of prayer praise worship faith and good works out comes blessing and yes. that stood out to me and I liked it because it was a nice reminder that blessing God, and yes, God is independent. He could, he could, you know, as I, I just put it, he could do what he wants. He, he's, he's, um, sovereign in his decision that yes. he could do what he wants. But having said that and putting that aside, when we want to seek God to bestow blessings, the book is saying to us, it takes a combination prayer praise yes. worship faith and good works and in my mind i equated that with a formula <laughs> ah blessing equals <laughs> prayer plus praise plus worship plus faith plus good works and the question i ask myself are all of these constantly active in my life and, you know, I think that's a, like a good point for encouraging as we consider book club conversations. Am I living in a place of prayer where prayer is a daily experience? Am I living in a place of praise where giving of praises to God is a daily experience? Am I living in a place of worship where worshiping God becomes a way of life? Am I living in a place of faith where I believe God for? Because... Um, you know, how we could say we're waiting for God to bless us if we're going down here to do our own thing, right? Am I living in a place of good works where because I'm sowing good works, it opens the door for blessings to come to me? So it, it was just like an encouragement, like a, um, like a, what's your word I'm looking for, girl? Like a, um, <sighs> like a measuring stick. To say, okay, these yeah. are the things I need to constantly have in my life on a daily basis. Do you, do you want to be blessed? All right. This is what you need to be every day. You need to be in a place of prayer, praise, worship, faith, and good works. That's the formula. Based on what the book is showing us, that's the formula. So once you're living in a place, having that combination of prayer, praise, worship, faith, and good works, it means the door is open for blessing because that combination brings I thought it was like a good practical way to look at it um, in terms of like having a self check you know yeah. yes I and totally the, agree yeah and then the other thing another thing that stood out again that we mentioned earlier is the notion that blessing and prosperity are more than money so I think that was like I mean we got that from the definition but it did stand out blessing and prosperity is more than money 
throw me throw me for 20. The Hebrew word for prosperity is shalom. That threw me for 20. Yes. Because I'm like, mm. I didn't know that. <laughs> because when we think, when I think, the exposure, the surface level exposure that I have had to shalom is um, peace. Shalom means peace. That's mm. what I've been taught. That's what I've heard all my life. Shalom means peace. So now that I'm going deeper and it's saying, Shalom is pros the Hebrew word for prosperity is shalom. I was like, oh, all right. And then later down, um, see, and I could tell you because it's highlighted. <laughs> later down, it says shalom is completeness, soundness, welfare, and peace. And it's that was that really stood out to me because I was like, again, I didn't know that. But it just showed, wow, how much deeper the word shalom, how much deeper for meaning the word shalom carries. Because they were saying it represents completeness in number and safety and soundness in your physical body. Shalom also covers yeah. relationship with God and with people. I, I had to take a 20 on that one day. Because I was like, oh. So, so I wrote... My little notes on the side says one. Oh, I have a. Oh, I don't want to tell you. I'll tell you that another day. That that my tip for another day. But I wrote. <laughs> um, I don't need provision. I need favor. Mm -hmm. Um, and I say that all the time. Uh, but I just wanted to to write it to remind myself because again, a lot of times when we talk about what we need we talk about needing provision we need money we need this and you know just through reading the book as we go through realize that what the book is showing us that what we really need is favor we need god's favor because god's favor changes things but the next thing i wrote is i need his shalom operational in my life and that was like a reminder that i thought about that i wanted to write to remind me i need god's shalom to be operational in my life because shalom is completeness, soundness, welfare, and peace. And I wanted to remind me of that because I need God's completeness. Because if I'm complete in him, that's a whole other kind of completeness as opposed to I trying to fix me as a human, as an individual. I'm not trying to fix me, but if I could be complete in him, that is completeness. I need his completeness. I need his, I need his soundness. I need his welfare. I need his peace. Because if, if we look at those, those are almost like fundamentals just for being functional in life, in my opinion. Because if you don't have, um, if you what's the word if your welfare is not taken care of it means all your needs are unmet if you don't have peace it means mm. you're miserable if you're not complete it means you're broken if you don't have soundness mm. it means you're just all over the place so to me i look when i read it i looked at those as like fundamentals in life and those fundamentals in life are actually um what's the word i'm looking for are I can't think of another word. They're encapsulated. They're, they're within the notion of yeah. shalom. I need God's shalom operational, not just in my thought life, not just in my understanding. I want, I desire, I need God's shalom to be operational in my life. And that took me for another 20 minutes when I was reading. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I am, I, am, I am here and things would have stood out to me. But, you know, in listening to you, Alina, in listening to you, you know, it really does bring it from a different perspective. And, right. um, you know, as you talked about, you talked about the prosperity, you talked about the blessing and the word shalom, because we have all been taught shalom means peace. peace. You are and my peace. That's and, it. Yeah. That's right. And, you yeah. know, we never looked beyond. But what, nope. this, what this book is doing and what it has done, you know, it has just opened up a different level in our minds, a different level of understanding. And even, you know, right, right after that particular paragraph there, Alina, is where it talks about, 
um, favor. It talks about the favor, and we, we say this prosperity, this blessing, we need the favor of God. And it yeah. describes the favor. That, you know, it says favor means grace. You yep. know, God's unmerited favor towards us. And that is in all aspects of our lives. And it, it speaks here, and it says favor means grace. Mm -hmm. That which affords, makes us feel, makes us feel, as it says, affords, makes us feel joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness, and also by extension, goodwill, yeah. benefit, yeah. bounty, yeah. reward. Yeah. You know, so that in itself, I, listen, this is a book you can't, you can't just read it through nope. and be done. Nope. You got to read Every one two paragraph. sentences, yeah, it'll take a 15 minutes off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, because the word itself, it yeah. incorporates the word of God, scriptures and all of these things. Yes. And that is what it does, you know, it touches. It is touching. It's touching Alina. It's touching myself when we, when we read when we read, it touches, you know, down into your core being and it shakes up something there that yeah. you've just had and it's stagnant for a little while. And just in reading, the, the, and that's just what? The first paragraph, second paragraph, two paragraphs paragraph. in the book. <laughs> right. You know, been able to do. And so, listen, I am looking forward yeah. to getting one halfway through because if this is what we got from the first the introduction and the first three paragraphs yeah then listen our lives our lives are going to be completely changed yes by the time we are done yes what do you think alina yeah definitely um and you know even as as we come to that point uh and we go into our affirmation um, so of course, as I was telling you off camera before we came on, my affirmation for today um, was linked to when I was looking at your um, worship at dawn, worship at dawn, right? Yes. Right. Yes, and yes. for those of you who are watching, if it is you're looking for that daily dose of encouragement and um, just just to have a connect early in the morning, Pamela is on dutifully at quarter to five every morning it could very well be alarm dutifully at quarter to five every morning sunday to sunday for worship at dawn you can look her up um using the keywords l gibor e l space g i b b o r l gibor christian network she has a worship at dawn morning devotion that she does every single morning starting at quarter to five so you could check out um her morning devotion um every day but as i was tuning in um you said you were talking and you talked about good gifts coming from god and um whatever you were saying however you're saying it that stood out to me this morning because you know there's so many things that um i have on my mind even these days and you know, sometimes in, in humanness, um, yes, we believe God, but in humanness, sometimes concern could start to creep in and wondering if how could start to creep in. And, you know, it's something that, you know, you deal with. And I think all persons deal with on different levels as we activate faith. And, um, you know, this morning that just sparked that activation of faith for me even as i was thinking why am i even taking time to be concerned about these situations because all good gifts come from god and if this is a good gift it will come if this is part of the good gift that god has for me it will come and you know i was just sitting this morning even as i was getting prepared for my day and i was you know just thanking god god i thank you that good gifts come from you god i position myself to receive good gifts i speak good gifts and i call good gifts and i say good gifts are coming in this day that good gifts are manifesting in my life even starting now leaving spiritual and coming into the physical and being manifested in every moment in this day that today is a day of goodness because i serve a good god who gives his children good gifts and i am his child and blah, 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 blah. And so my affirmation is that all good gifts, <laughs> ah, 
had a 15 minutes this morning on that too. Uh, all good <laughs> gifts come from God. I am his child and today will be a day I will receive good gifts. It will be made manifest even today in different situations. It will just come and I will be grateful every time it comes and I will not hesitate to say, God, thank you when it shows up. Today is going to be a day of good gifts. So that's my affirmation for today. What is your affirmation for today, Pamela? You know, and, um, and that is something that really ministered to me this morning, you know, as you talked about good gifts. But uh, what I would say to those viewing and listening in and so on, I would say to you that my affirmation for you and, you know, what I speak over your life you know, is that all things work together for good. Yeah. Even as she said, good gifts, all things, whether you are going through a bad situation, uh, you know, you may be feeling a little bit stressed at the moment. You may have a lot of things on your mind, whatever it may be. All things will work together. And even as the Bible says it too, all things work together for those that love the Lord. Amen. You know, so I say that all things will work together for your good. And that is something that I can, I can say and I can shout it and I declare it upon your life yes. today. So Pamela and I are in agreement that we are a people That's of blessing and prosperity yes. and we speak blessing and prosperity yes. not just over ourselves but over you so thank you for yes. joining us for book club conversations today if you haven't gotten the book get the book if you're having a challenge getting the book message me i could tell you how to get it but um we are reading just to remind those of you who are tuning in prayers that activate blessings by john eckhart i hope i'm pronouncing it correct please don't be mad if i say any man name wrong but by john eckhart um prayers that activate blessings it's encouraging pamela and i are you reading if you didn't read but you tuned into the conversation how was the conversation what are your thoughts um did anything stand out to you? I know we, we shared with you what stood out to us, but based on our conversation this morning, did anything stand out to you? We want to hear from you. And of course, we're going to be on again on Friday, continuing with our book club conversations. Thank you for joining. Until next time, have a great one. Have a great day. Have a day of experiencing blessing and prosperity. Have a day, what it is we read this morning, Gil. Have a day that, that, that includes prayer, praise, worship, yes. faith, and good works. And as you think about all that you want to do, remember that when your shalom, when God's shalom is operational in your life, you function in a place of completeness. <laughs>